and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in May 25. This one was another tough month, lots of really awesome games, there's a bunch of them that left early access after several years, and quite a lot of variety. Some are dark and moody, some are really bright and colorful. There's management games, action games, strategy games, and a bunch more. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game, that is my personal pick of the month. And there's an awesome humble bundle that just started. This one has tons of tools and visual assets. For example, this really nice wireframe shader. You've got this tool to help you easily draw all kinds of debug shapes directly in your world. You've got a pack with a bunch of really cool shader effects. Then you've got some really nice dungeon props. You've got a bunch of everyday motions. Also some super cool cartoon VFX. And a bunch more stuff from a modular castle. You've got Fishnet Pro, some blood effects. You've got tons of icons, a bunch more characters, sci-fi bosses, dinosaurs, and all kinds of things. As always, if just one of these assets looks interesting, then the home bundle is worth it. So check it out with the link in the description. All right, so starting off at number 10, here we have a rat simulator game called Ratopia. I'm pretty sure I remember seeing Splattercat play the original early access release of this game several years ago. It looked fun back then, and right now it just launched out of early access. This one is both a survival game along with some serious city building elements. You start off as a single rat, just by yourself, gathering resources and building a house. Then you invite one ratizen to join you, and then another, and another. Soon enough, you have an entire colony, and you're guiding them as to what each one should be doing. Each ratizen has their own needs and wants. You must give them jobs and services to keep them happy. You can create policies. You can create policies to guide the behavior you want. Specifically, you can define the tax rate. Then of course, the world is also massive, so you can explore and expand your colony. But there are also some dangerous creatures outside. You must defend your territory or just colonize the entire world. If you do it right, you can build a giant metropolis with lots of happy ratizens. The game is now fully released after spending two years in early access. Next here we have a relaxing fun one, it's Animal Spa. Here you run a bathhouse that is visited by animals. There's a variety of really cute animals that will join your spa. Cats, dogs, pandas, rabbits, hamsters and a bunch more. You set the water temperature, either cold, warm or hot, or create some special baths with some bubble machines. Then it's not just the bath itself, it's everything around it. So you can place some vending machines and some sands to sell some drinks and snacks. Build the bathhouse of your dreams, lots of upgrades and objects to place everywhere. Then hire some help to take care of your guests, and then receive some really cute letters from your guests with all kinds of fun stories. And it's also one of those games that works on the bottom of your desktop, so you can enjoy running your animal spa while you're out doing something else. The visuals are really great, some nice pixel art, very cozy, very inviting. People are really enjoying this one. It has almost 700 reviews at 93% positive. Then here's one that seems pretty obvious, it's called Blacksmith Master. I say obvious because personally I love medieval fantasy sort of games, so a game where you play as a blacksmith seems like a really obvious idea to me. And there are actually a few of those games on Steam, but most of them have mixed or negative reviews. Thankfully this one seems to be very solid. Like the implies, you manage your own medieval smithy, build out your smithy, build various rooms for each task required, so you hire some miners to get onto mines and gather some raw ore, then hire someone else to process that ore into a nice ingot, then another one to turn that ingot into a sword, and yet another worker to sharpen that sword. Do all of that to create the perfect sword, and then finally sell it for a profit and just keep expanding your smithy. You can make swords, make tools, jewelry, even some kitchen utensils. This one is also yet another example of how gamers don't really care about assets. This one is very clearly using Cindy assets, and yet it's a great game and players love it. It's out right now in early access and already has 800 very positive reviews. So if you want to manage a medieval smithy, then definitely give this a try. Up next, if you're a fan of the deep sea, then here we have Ocean Keeper Dome Survival. This one is an action roguelike with some tower defense elements. It's a game with actually two sides. So first you go out by yourself in order to drill and mine for resources in caves, and then you use those resources to upgrade your mech spider to destroy all kinds of dangerous creatures. They come in waves, so make sure you grab enough resources to buy powerful enough upgrades in order to survive that wave, and then if you do survive, go out mining again, and once again get enough to survive the next wave. There are several biomes to explore, each with their own unique quirks, including including some mysterious locations like an abandoned sci-fi laboratory. The game is meant to be real played, so each session is unique, and the meta upgrades, they help you improve over every run. This one was in early access for about one year, and just had a full release. Right now it's got 600 very positive views. Then for some VR, here we have The Break-In. It's a co-op game where you break into a house with your friends, and then basically just steal everything that isn't bolted down. You can grab some jewelry, then throw it out the window, make sure your friend is outside of it so he can pick it up, and then throw it on the back of a truck. You can see 
seal really just about anything. You can seal TVs, fridges, and even some toilets. Then it's up to you to pick a getaway vehicle. You can also pick your tools, pick a target, and just go. Anything you can get in your van, you can sell, and then you can use that money to upgrade some new thief equipment. However, the houses also have resins. You can use all kinds of tools to either avoid them or knock them out. It features a pretty freeform climbing system. You can just use your hands, for example, put them on each rung of the ladder in order to get up to a second floor window. And it also has a class system, so you can be a sneaky infiltrator, or perhaps be a strongman, or be the mastermind that coordinates everything. This one seems really perfect for VR, but it also works without VR. You can mix and match with some players in VR and some players not in VR. The levels are also randomized, so you have a brand new challenge every time. This one first came out in early access two years ago, and now just hit 1.0, and it's got 1800 very positive views. Next up, we have a minimalist city builder called Mini Settlers. Personally, I love how this one looks. Very minimalist, very abstract. It's basically just straight up gameplay with no fancy visuals to distract you. Your goal is to settle various islands, construct cities, and design some efficient logistic networks in order to fulfill all of your building needs. You start off just by harvesting basic resources like coal and corn, and then connect those harvesters to factories, which will process those raw materials into something quite a bit more complex. And then you can use those complex items to settle on an island and start growing your population. There are various biomes for you to expand and populate. Despite being a minimalist game, it still has a lot of raw materials and components, a lot of stuff that lets you build some truly massive and very efficient production lines. Once you've built something large, you can just marvel at the super efficient system you have created. This one has just left early access and currently has 400 very positive views. Then here we have a fun adventure game that people love. It's called Duck Detective, the Ghost of Glamping. You play as a depressed and recently divorced duck who must solve the case. There's a lot of duck puns all over this game. You can explore this world, you can investigate for clues, interview various suspects, and really just crack the case. Personally, I really like how they very clearly mention on the Steam page how this is a short game. It is just two to three hours. And players usually don't mind that, as long as those short hours are really good and you tell them upfront. This one is actually the second Duck Detective game. People love the original, and this one is also being super well received. Both of them have overwhelmingly positive reviews. This one has 500 reviews at 99% positive. So that's really basically 100% it's an insane score. Everyone absolutely loves this game. It's also awesome to see an indie studio find such success with an indie series, both financial success and review success. There aren't many series where every game in the series actually has insanely positive reviews. Players that love this genre, they clearly do love these games. So if that's you, then definitely give it a shot. Up next, here we have a roguelike kingdom builder. It is called Nine Kings. You use cards to build your city, place down some buildings, some units, and some spells. There are all kinds of combos that you can take advantage of to become really overpowered. The game definitely encourages that. And then you take your city and your army and you engage in some massive battles against all kinds of enemies. I really like how this game looks, especially the unit movements. The way they jump up and down looks super cool. And all the towers and their attacks, all those look really satisfying. This game is definitely doing something right considering just how successful it already is. Honestly, I'm pretty surprised to see this one find such insane success. Just because strategy games, especially ones with small pixelated graphics like this, those games usually are relatively niche, but this one is definitely not the case. It's also published by Hooded Horse, which is a great strategy game publisher that basically really just publishes super high quality stuff like Men and Lords. Currently, the game already has 3,000 very positive reviews, meaning it has already sold more than a million dollars in just a few days. That's really awesome. And by the looks of the trailer and the gifts, I would say this game definitely looks like it's super satisfying to play. There's lots of tiny animations everywhere. Everything just screams polish. So if you're looking for some fun, tiny strategy, then definitely give this a try. Next, if you want to breed some monsters, look at the Monster Breeder. In this one, you can breed and crossbreed various monsters to create mutations and build the perfect monster. You can manipulate their traits with some surgery, some magic, or maybe some alchemy. And of course, you can explore the world to encounter more species to crossbreed. You can mix two monsters, then take their offspring and mix it again with something else. After that, of course, you can take your monsters onto the arena and have them fight. If you need help, you can also hire the help of warriors, archers, and mages to fight alongside your monsters. Potions and weapons can also help, and each arena is unique, so the right setup is required to win. Now, in terms of the visuals, the game definitely looks a little bit weak, but in terms of gameplay and the concept, I really like it. This one is out now and currently has over 200 very positive views. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here we have what I think is actually the biggest hit this month. It's called The Precinct. This is one of the best looking Unity games I've ever seen. Perhaps it's because personally, I'm a big fan of this top down view. It reminds me of a modern GTA 2, but really just objectively, it's a great looking game. Like it implies, this one is all about police. The year is 1983 and you play as a cop tasked with cleaning up the city. You have to uphold the law while chasing and arresting minor criminals, or stop some serious threats like some bank robbers, get into some car chases and shootouts with all your foes. The game is both story focused and really
really just a fun sandbox. You can explore the city either on foot or on car or even on a helicopter. It features a day-night cycle with some dynamic weather. There's some really satisfying destructible environments and plenty of crimes for you to stop. I saw gifts of this one going viral for several years now and now the game is finally out. It launched with about 700,000 wishlists and so far in less than one month it already has 4,000 very positive views. Meaning it has likely already sold over 4 million dollars. This one is an insane hit. Like I said GTA 2 is one of my favorite games of all time so I definitely would like to play this one to see how much game design has improved in the past let's say 30 years. Alright so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launched in May 25. I hope this list helped you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game Dinky Guardians and I hope you enjoy playing it.